Hey guys, welcome back to Slash Rex Game. So in this tutorial, we're going to be continuing from our last slide bar to value horizontal and vertical slide bar story tutorial. And in this case, we are going to be doing the horizontal bar as well as the slider. So I'm going to go here into objects. I'm just going to duplicate both of these, which save us some time. And move them down. This one's going to be called object H bar. This one's going to be called object H slider, it's like that. And obviously, we've got to give it the right sprite, just like that. Now, I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, well because we've duplicated this event. There could be some things that go wrong. So when we go through everything, we're going to absolutely make sure that we change the variables that we need to change. So that's one thing. So let's go into the H bar that creates the H slider. We're going to go into the creative here, and some things are going to change. For example. We are now not working with top and bottom limit. We are working with the left and right limit. Now, I'm going to stay very conventional here and standardize that left is going to be the, you know, 0% and right is going to be 100%. So to do that, in our last case, top was 100%. So top is going to be right. Top changes to right, bottom changes to left. So let's do that. Everywhere we see right, uh, let's see top, we're going to change that. Everywhere we see bottom, we change to left, just like that. Also, everywhere we see Y has got to change to X, because we're no longer dealing with the Y axis, we're dealing with the X axis. And sprite height changes to sprite width, sprite thing, oh no, right width, just like that. Okay, again, we want 75 pixels on the edge, about, you know, Give it a good little bit at the edge. And instead of creating V slider, we are creating H slider. So let's give it a look. We're creating the instance of H slider, we're passing it its X scale, its Y scale, its bar length, which is the width. There. We're passing it the right limit and setting that to the same right limit as the sprite that it's checking out, and the left limit, which is the left limit of it there. Then we're giving its first X variable where it's going to start at the far left on 0%. So that's done. We're going to go into the left pressed, and here we're going to change everything from mouse x to mouse. I mean, from mouse y to mouse x, just like that. A dot y is going to change to a dot x. Bottom limit is going to be left limit. Top limit is going to be right limit. And these are going to all change. So le less than becomes greater than, greater than becomes less than. So we're doing like an opposite because of the rotation and the changing of the vertical to the horizontal. So that's setting up that slider for a good time. So once that's done, that's all good. We're going to go into the H slider now. Go into its create event. It's going to change YY to XX, grabs the same, percentage is still at zero. We're going to go to its left pressed over here. Grab is true when we press it. At YY is going to change to XX. This is getting the relative position uh, between the mouse and the slider's you know, current location, which is that. Okay, that's done. When we release it, that's the same. Grab is equal to false. That's all good. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go into the step event. Quite a lot of things are going to change here. I'm going to use find and replace. So I'm going to find mouse y, replace all of it with mouse x. That's the first change. Replace all. We're going to replace everything that says yy with xx. Replace. And the rest of the things I'm going to do manually. So let's get rid of that. These change to X, that changes to X. Looking for any other Ys, make sure there are absolutely no Ys in here because we don't need them. Again, bottom is going to be left, so let's open up that. Bottom changes to left, so it'll save us so much time. And top changes to right limit. Replace. So now, doing all that, a lot of this should be good to go. But again, what we need to do is change the signs of all of these. Greater than becomes less than, and less than becomes greater than. This calculation at the bottom again, we're just taking you know where the slider is, and we're finding out you know its location depending on the whole width between the right and left limits. Then we are times that by 100 to get our percentage. So now that should all be done, just like that. 
So a rundown, if we're not clicking on anything, obviously it's not grabbed. If it isn't grabbed, then leave the step and don't come back. Otherwise, if the mouse X, so this relative mouse position where we want it to move, is greater than the limit, and it's less than the right limit, so it's within the green zone between the left and the right limit, then we're going to let the player you know, move it. Otherwise, if we want it to go somewhere where it is too far left, then we're going to set it to the leftmost limit. If it's too far right, we set it to the rightmost limit. And obviously the percentage calculation works right at the very end. And that returns it to the draw event over here. Things we should probably change. I'm thinking bottom changes to left, top changes to right, changes to right, left, percentage grabbed, that's all good. That might be a little squished, but it doesn't really matter. So that, that's all good. I mean, that is how simple you know this whole process is you can see how familiar the h slider and the v slider are they're pretty much the same thing only they one's going on the y axis the other one's going on the x axis so now if we go into our horizontal room over here i've got this little object that you know just handles the room changes so i'm going to bring in some of our h bars right over here i'm going to put in two i think should be a good number just like that say okay save all that Everything should be fine. Went through it with a fine tooth comb. Okay, so these are our vertical sliders. They're all still working as they did before. There's a hundred, there's something in the middle, you know, they're different sizes. Enter. Oh, whoops, looks like we've got our limits back to front over here. So if we go back to H bar, I think these are supposed to swap. Mm -hmm. Swap them around. Let's have a look. Left limit X minus the sprite width. Yes, that's good. That's the right way it's supposed to be. Okay. Run that. It should be fine now. Okay, so next. There we go. Perfect. So we can drag that around. Check that out. That's pretty cool. So that's 0%. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This will be about 50% over here. And all the way to the end is 100. And they are different sizes. The length here is 72250. And this one is 57338. So it's scaling that percentage in absolutely perfectly right over there so lastly what we want to do is take this percentage and you know work with some sort of scaled object in this case i'm going to do that spinning maneuver so here in my object resource tree i've got object thing one and object thing two now basically what they do is they just grab for well, their scale they grab the percentage uh, values of the V slider and the H slider. They divide it by uh, 100 to work with the scale to get it as a decimal, just like that. And then, you know, it spins around. So that's pretty much all they do. So as long as the sliders, the V sliders and the H sliders are in existence, it'll be able to grab its value perfectly. So if we go here into the final room, this is it. And delete that for now. I'm going to bring in the V bar. And I'm going to bring in the H bar there. Then what I'm going to do is bring in thing 1 and thing 2. Right down there. Now when we test it out, as we move the slider, whether it be the horizontal one or the vertical one, these are going to increase and decrease in scale. So save that, save the project, go OK. There we go, these are all obviously working as they usually did. Next room, Sliders are working as they're supposed to. Last room, hey, there's nothing here. They're both on zero. So as we increase these slide bars, check how they increase to 100%. See, check that out. And again, these two bars are different length, yet they still maximize this object to the same scale. Pretty, pretty neat, eh? So that about wraps up the vertical and horizontal slider movement different scales you can whack in your own sprites this is so abstract that it'll pick out the length and width of them and it'll work so with this you can add a sound menu to your op options room and the player will be able to change the sound levels or other things such as brightness and quality or whatever you can think of using these slide bars it really looks aesthetically pleasing to the eye having a slider just like that pretty cool I hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful please feel free to comment rate and subscribe for more of the very best gaming tutorials if you really like what you see in this tutorial as well as some of the other ones I've got going 
and you would like to support this channel in any way, please check out my Patreon campaign for more details. You can find the studio as well as GameMaker 8 project files in the description right below. Download them, fiddle around with them, and explore. If you have any questions on this specific tutorial or would like to make a suggestion on what I should cover next, pop that in the comment section, I'll give them a read. Also, don't forget to check out my Facebook page if you haven't already for news, ramblings, and updates on what I'm going to put up next and when. So as always, happy coding, and I'll see you guys next time for another great GameMaker tutorial.